Welcome life Love, this is George G, and the time is right. Welcome to today's guest, strong and powerful, Stu Redwine. Stu, are you ready to do this? I am so ready, George. All right, let's go. Stu is the VP of Creative Services with Oxford Road. They're the leading privately owned audio ad agency, pairing disruptive brands with powerful media outlets and podcasts. Stu, I'm excited to have you on. Tell us a little bit about your personal life, some more about your work, why you do what you do. Absolutely. Currently, personal life, the uh, big change is my oldest child just started high school. So that's quite the adjustment. With that uh, with that change, I'm like, wow, the countdown clock has started. I've got four years left before she moves back in for another 18 <laughs> years. <laughs> oh, and I uh, recently got a dog in May, Maverick. Awesome. Coincides with the Top Gun film. Um, and getting underneath why I do what I do, like like you said, thank you for the introduction at Oxford Road. Like I like to say, I've been around there since before the beginning as a contractor um, and then full time for seven years. And when I think about it, you know, part of it is I've always made stuff. I've always been creative and life's trajectory. I don't totally understand, but um, where I am now is uh, I still get the opportunity to create for brands that advertise products and services I believe in and would use myself. And in addition to that, uh, for every action that is taken based on one of the advertisements that Oxford Road places, um, we also donate to the Children's Hospital here in Los Angeles, where cuddlers are provided to hold babies that didn't have anybody to hold them, um, very young babies. And if 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 you know anything about uh, human development in those early months of zero to 20, basically pre-verbal, if you're not getting held enough, it's that bakes some stuff into the mind and our ability to process emotions. And so when it gets tough or my back's against the wall, it's thinking about that impact over time and the generational impact that's able to give me even more motivation than simply, hey, this is cool. I get a chance to get paid to make stuff. I've always liked making stuff. Um, there's also this probably incalculable long-term impact. I think that's amazing. I've always joked that, uh, and I know that folks in nonprofit joke about this as well, that folks that work for animal charities and they can advertise puppies to raise money, that's pretty easy. But if you're if you're trying to raise money for people that cuddle babies, that's that seems like a slam dunk too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would think, you would think. Um, yeah, but I'm it's, sure it's not. Well, you know, it's uh, like I said, it's it's a privilege to be part of something where, especially as there's a trend in 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 the workplace and with younger workers that they want to know what the purpose and values are um, that we're able to bring with Oxford Road to the table to go, hey, look, you can check, you can expect inspect this. It's solid all the way through. Here's the direct impact uh, of your work at Oxford Road into improving lives, not just for this generation, but for generations to come. Yeah, well, I think that that's super powerful and uh, credit to you and Oxford Road for uh, for for really leading with that, because I think that is so important. So in terms of I've, I've been spending a lot of time thinking about um, decentralization and moving away from legacy, just reimagining how we educate our kids, where we mm -hmm. work, how, how we receive news and information. And it strikes me that podcasting is a, this exciting new form of media and there's a bigger opportunity than maybe I had thought about before. What are your thoughts on, on what I just, on that? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, think about it. You know, when, when radio advertising started um, in, in the early days of the 20th century, I think it was uh, very early on, like in 1922, 1921, there was 10 licenses for radio stations. 10 DJs could get behind microphones. Hmm. And then you had to be geographically close to them to be able to hear them. It was very small because it had to be because of the technology. And then to maximize it and... Uh, make it pay and merchandise it and everything uh it made sense that it that it had to get that it had to be controlled from the top like at&t was one of the they were doing telephones they were charging people 
time for money to talk on the telephone, this massive company then goes, hey, we can do the same thing over these radio airwaves. Um, like you're saying, decentralization networks, uh, the welcome to the age of the internet and digitization where now you, you don't need a license from the federal government to be talking to me right now. And, uh, uh, the, one of the first radio stations, um, over in, uh, on the East coast, I remember I was, I was looking this up for another interview, but long story short, some of the very early broadcasts, a thousand sets were picking it up. Hmm. so and like okay maybe there was a family well back then it was a family of 12 but still uh you know how many people is that where you it's limitless so there isn't the command and control from from on top even though we are seeing it begin to sort of swing back that way but you're absolutely right and the space continues to grow um there are so many opportunities for podcasters to get out there and the ability to build an audience is limitless yeah how do you think about, um, I don't know if this is something, well, as, as a creative, how do you think about helping a brand stand their own podcast up versus and or uh, get their message out via other people's podcasts? Well, so it's a couple of, you know, it's how are we going to measure success and how long do we have to get there? So um, I think if a brand is starting its own podcast, that's a longer term play. Uh, I think it's interesting. There was just some conversations that we we're having uh, this week about that with the folks that did the Trader Joe's podcast, which has been a fantastic success for a brand as a podcast. But like I said, that's a long term play. That's a long term consideration where a lot of what we do is performance driven to go. I'm putting this much money into the machine for a six week media test or an eight week media test. And I need to see that those advertisements convert on what other, whatever metrics I'm looking at. But if we gave you copy, let's say you're going, go to tommyjohn.com slash George to get, or tommyjohn.com slash lifeblood for this special discount to go, oh, okay, that this works. We want to keep doing that. Uh, the Tommy John, their own branded podcast, that's a much longer term consideration. Got it. No, that makes a ton of sense. And so what, what is an appropriate expectation uh, out, out of that? Obviously, I'd love for to put my spot on on a massive podcast and get thousands of new customers or clients or whatever. Um, but how 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 do you think about the build, or is the expectation that it's going to happen immediately? The expectation is absolutely that's going to happen immediately. <laughs> now, <laughs> yeah. Right. I just put this dollar in and I get three dollars back. Right. Isn't that right, man? You know, performance is performance is performance. So gratefully, you know, Oxford Road, we're in our ninth year. Um, we've got hundreds of millions of dollars of performance data to be able to look at. There's that first um, length of time, number of drops, uh, you know, a product that already has some recognition um that the funnel is right the product is right uh that we from our performance data that we're able to see like hey we know this is where folks are that would be interested in this that there's a connection with the host especially early on with the initial tests that again like we say you know that it's a product they um would use and believe in or are using preferably um and then you should see rather quickly if it is, if there, it's like, is this thing on? Is this thing on? But a critical piece of it when you're initially going into the space and audio is that if you're only testing for a specific amount of time, you need to make sure that you're letting the listener know that I'm going to be measuring it within this amount of time so that they take action based on the advertisement within that window that you're looking at, even though attribution mm -hmm. is somewhat changing with pixel based attribution, still, it doesn't hurt to go. If we're only doing this test through now and the end of the year, what can we do to compel them to take action? Not that we're going to do that for all time, but so that we can know how many folks are out there, how many that we can activate within the space. And then, be thoughtful about what a further investment will look like. Got it. This may seem like a really obvious question, but I really don't know how much data that you can get from 
from podcast listeners with all the different channels? Is there a way to how 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 granular can you get? So you can there's a few different things that you can look at. Um, like I said recently, I mean relatively recently with pixel based attribution, that's helpful. Um, but another piece of audio that is still uh important to this day and kind of can feel i think a little bit antiquated but it's really not uh is the how did you hear about a survey that's one that's incredibly helpful uh another is a specific attributable path and then what you have to remember is that both with the how did you hear about a survey and the specific attributable path like lifeblood.com slash tommy john that a, there's a certain percentage of people that will do exactly that there's another group of people, a large group of people that'll just go to Tommy John, right? Or search for Tommy John. And so how do we make sure we catch those or what kind of multiplier can we use based on previous performance for an advertiser like this to, to give us an idea of how many of those people there would be? Um, because I mean, you know, how many people follow directions exactly as told? Few. Exactly. <laughs> You're like, I don't understand. We told them all to go to this path. Where are they? Right. It's like, <laughs> you're like they're human. So, <laughs> <laughs> and they're forgetful. Um, so, you know, you've got to use multiple forms of measurement. And then again, it, it helps out tremendously to be able to look back historically, like at, at Oxford Road and, and the other places. But to be able to have that historical data, to be able to go, okay, if we're seeing these kinds of signals, then this is the sort of response we can expect. Got it. And as as brands are trying to make decisions about what shows that they want to advertise on, <clears throat> that's another thing that I'm curious about. I I really ought to know the answers to these questions, but I don't. When 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 you look at uh, at at um, wait wait don't tell me or the Joe Rogan podcast. Did, right. Can 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 you know? Yeah, he's got a million downloads or whatever, but down to demographic information. I mean, there's a there's a ton of information out there, and it's really going to depend on the network and the show. I, I I'll say it. I said it once. I'll say it again. Performance, performance, performance. You know yeah. where? Let's see what's worked there before. Sometimes the pricing of a, even a, like a really big show like that can make it um, not necessarily as attractive from a performance standpoint where what you want to see is how well has this host been at being able to drive people to take action if that's the metric you're using to measure. But it all depends on, uh, you know, if it's just like kind of uh, can we just send it out into the ether and then know exactly you know, who listened to it in Peoria, Illinois on a Tuesday at 5 15 PM. I mean, depends possibly. What does that get you? It depends on what, how much does the network know? What do we know? And what kind of action have we seen uh, based on previous campaigns to go? This is who's listening to these different programs, but you know, it brings up a bigger point of going, maybe I have this narrow idea of who my audience is. Some of the, the, the work, by Byron Sharp that's really guided a lot of marketing in the last few years is that your brand needs to constantly be gaining new consumers, which you're kind of like, yeah, of course. Um, but constantly gaining new buyers and that the majority of the buyers of your brand are light buyers or one-time buyers, very few, right? There's some, there's some charts in his book, how brands grow, like with cigarette buyers where, Actually, the majority of cigarette buyers are people that buy one pack a year, hmm. right? You're like, so is it the one time they go out and party and like, or like, I yeah. remember, that, you know, I need a cigarette to go with this. <laughs> uh, but the the majority of your buyers are light buyers over time. So I'm saying all this to say, to get back to the, to your question of going, okay, I've got all this targeting information. That's good. That's interesting. This is who I think my customers are. This is maybe who I want my customers to be, but all kinds of different folks may buy your product. And the real question, particularly in podcasting where the connection is intimate and authentic, 
is how well the host is at activating their audience. Makes sense. And what do you think about uh, what the future of the actual advertisement is going to look like? Is it going to be before the show, during the show? Is it you want to probably ideally you'd love to have the host really love the product and work it into the conversation, but maybe I'm wrong about that. You're spot on about that. I think that's been the nature of audio since, uh, since the early days. It's, it's intentional. Um, it's, it's intimate. I think you're going to see podcasting evolve into something very similar to radio. Um, they already are very similar, but you're going to see spot loads go up. So right now you've got the pre-roll, the mid-roll and the post-roll. I think don't be shocked if it begins to turn into something where there's multiple breaks throughout throughout the spot. Uh, on average, the average podcast length right now is 37 minutes. You're going to see podcast links kind of it's going to it's been the Wild West. And as civilization comes in, we got to put in roads and the roads need to be set widths. And the the railroad gauges can't all be different. They can't be one gauge in Arizona and another in California, you know. Uh, so you're going to see it get consolidated. And I think for that premium spot, for you to read the copy and give your personal endorsement, you're going to see a price premium on that. And then across the board, it's going to start feeling a lot more like ad breaks in radio. Does that sound good? You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. It, it, it's interesting. I guess it's not bad. I'll, I'll have to noodle on that a little bit, Stu. <laughs> I think it's it's uh, it's market forces. I don't think it is all bad because you know more than anything, you want to save the live read. So one one thing that was happening with dynamic ad insertion. And this has all been very quick stuff. It's like, oh, we're just going to have the robots do it. And we there's been some people have bumped their heads on dynamic ad insertion. Of course, it'll get better, just like self-driving cars. But part of what that revealed is that this personal connection, shocker, isn't new to podcast. Mm -hmm. No, it's a hundred years old. Uh, it's a piece of the way audio works because of the theater of the mind. Um that that the live read will still be part of it, but I, you know, it just makes sense that if we figured out we could cram that many ads into an hour of radio, how long can podcasts really hold out? Uh, especially as it, you know, so it's, I think it's somewhat inevitable, but you know what? Real, real quick last thing on that, whether it's good or bad, I think the thing that would be bad, quote unquote, would be the loss of imagination. In that the ads don't like, okay, podcast is different th with than radio in that it's not a set clock that has to broadcast in time. So what we don't want to lose is the imagination to go 60 second spot, 30 second spot. There's going to be this gravitational pull to make it grow up and look like grandpa. But it's like, no, it doesn't have to because the rules are different. So long way around to answer your question is like, do eight second ads. Could you do four minute integrations? Like, it doesn't necessarily have to come back down to earth and look just like radio. Yeah. Got it. I love it. Makes a lot of sense. Stu Redwine. Thank you so much for coming on. Where can people learn more about you and what's the best way for people to connect with create with, with Oxford road. So Stu redwine.com to learn more about Stu Redwine and Oxford road.com for Oxford road. And they can sign up for our, free newsletter that's full of information um, about the podcast space as it continues to evolve. Uh, so stewredwine.com and oxfordroad.com. And who are your ideal clients? Ideal clients. Oh man. Uh, I would say at this point in time, it's folks that have looked and sort of maximized their spend in digital channels are looking for new worlds to conquer, so to speak, um, and know that they have performance budgets um, that they maybe they've wanted to test into the podcast space, um, but have uh, decent levels of spend um, where they want to, if it's a space that they wanted to explore um, that they can do so with uh, Oxford road. 
Excellent. Well, if you enjoyed this much as I did, show Stu your appreciation and share today's show with a friend who also appreciates good ideas. Find Stu at stewredwine.com, just like it sounds, S-T-E-W-R-E-D-W-I-N-E.com. And then check out everything that they're working on over at Oxford Road at OxfordRoad.com. I'll link those in the notes of the show. Thanks, kids, Stu. Thank you. And until next time, remember, do your part by doing your best.